Hi everyone, uh, I've been asked if I could make a threaded clamp. It's a component part of a very rare Gordon microcar. This that you can see is the original component part. It was my intention at first to mark everything out, then remove the bulk of the material using a combination of angle grinder, hacksaw, files. That was before clamping the material to the lathe. The piece of material I chose to use was a bit of flat bar, a flat cold rolled bar, 50 millimeters by 10, 2 inches by 3 eighths. Cold rolled steel has more tensile strength than that of mild or hot rolled steel, and therefore should be better material than the original clamp. But having had a problem with that method, I, uh, I ruined the first piece, so uh, I elected to use the mill instead. This involved having to think out of the box a little bit, especially with the clamping, as my first choice of equipment is still at its well early stages. I still have to choose my tooling very carefully. So first things first, swap the three jaw for the four jaw chuck, uh, making sure that it's nice and clean before it's all reassembled. I used a live centre in the tailstock to set the uh, plate roughly into place. See here that the live centre is still being thrust about as the workpiece is being rotated. Then I used a large dead centre between the tailstock and sat in the centre punch mark on the material. As you can see, using a DTI it can be set quite well. After getting my jaw settings the right way around, I got the centre punch mark within 0.02 of a millimetre. That's less than a thou. I don't know why, but I always spin them up afterwards just to reconfirm visually, but I'm sure the gauge can do a better job than I can by eye. I'm just pecking with a centre drill before cutting the full countersunk centre. Now I'm drilling with a 7mm drill through to make way for the bigger drills. This drill by the way looks as though it needs resharpening. Next up I'm using a 13mm drill to make way for the final drilling operation. This drill is a 16mm drill. The 16mm drill is the size of the dead centre that I'm going to use as a support between the rotating table and the cutter head, as you'll see soon. For a drill, that's a thumping good fit, that is. The 16 by number 2 Morse taper is mounted directly in the centre of the rotary table, a bit like a king post. Around it is a collar to hold the workpiece as high as possible, hopefully not losing too much rigidity. The base plate is bolted to the rotating table and is butted up to the spine of the workpiece, acting as a driver. The stud holding the base plate is also holding the workpiece down with the aid of a few spacer washers. Firstly, I plunge cut the start and finish points and made reference to their positions. I did this to reduce the amount of pressure at the start and the finish of every cut. Then cautiously at first, 
I completed each radial cut at the depth of no greater than of about 2mm. I'd say that before putting the workpiece on the mill, I hacksawed the two shoulder pieces at a touch over 46mm apart. These two pieces fell away after plunge cutting the start and finish cuts. You can also see here that my fear of the workpiece moving had subsided somewhat and I felt a little happier taking bigger cuts. The very last cut was taken at full depth but only taking about 10 thou um, depth of cut. The problem there was that because of the full depth of cut the finish wasn't particularly good. I decided to machine the radial cut to size plus about 0.25mm, that's 10 thou. The 58mm outer diameter had to be filed eventually so that's what I did. As I dismantle the table you can see here how the whole thing actually did fit together. Uh, yeah, a bit risky, but it did the job. After cleaning down the uh, milling table, I clamped the milling vise and set the workpiece fairly true using a set square. But here's where I cheated a little bit. Instead of drilling all the way through, I drilled halfway, then turned the workpiece over, and after setting it up again, I drilled the other side and then through. Drills that are not very well ground, like mine are, um, will wander a bit, so I couldn't risk that. So fettled it out a little too. Before returning back to the lathe, I cut the 4mm gap in the centre of the spine using a hacksaw, then cleaned it up with a file. To prevent the workpiece from collapsing or springing, I put a packer in equal to the 4mm gap and used a stud to clamp it together, hoping of course that the workpiece remained as stable as possible. Now because the bore is going to be one and a half inches I had to invert the jaws to prevent colliding with them when I was machining. I used a bit of two inch aluminium pipe, 10 mil long. This allowed me to pass through the material safely. I could also put a lead chamfer on both sides of the finished bore before threading it. One of the problems that I had while I was trying to clean the bore up uh, was the fact that there's a gap in there and of course the intermittent cutting uh, caused the tool to bounce quite considerably and that meant that I'd got to do quite a few passes to do a spring cut just to remove any vibration marks. I used a DTI to confirm that the tool was true. The bore had to be 36.83 millimetres, which is 1.450 inches. To allow for the depth of thread, which is 0.635 millimetres, that's 25 thou, the thread, of course, is an old British standard brass thread, BSB, by 1.5 at 26 TPI. That took some working out in the change gear department. Because the thread is an old Imperial BSP thread um, and I'm working with a metric machine, that meant I had to leave the lead screw half knots engaged throughout the entire process. Now, because I had a spacer behind the workpiece, I could have used the motor to keep uh, swapping the direction. But, I decided to hand crank with the power switched off because I can't afford to have a, um, a motorised accident. At this point we have the near finished part. Just a few things to do like a little bit of fettling and that. And that's it, job done. After removing the stud on both the spacers I used a snap gauge to compare the bore in both the original components and the new one. The new one had sprung, but about 5 thou, which is neither here nor there really. The guy did actually send me a photo of the part fitted and uh, stated that the fit was perfect. Now, that's not bad for saying that I didn't have any kind of a thread gauge, not even a bolt.
once again thanks for watching uh, do subscribe and tick the bell uh, click like if you liked what you saw and as always if you've got any questions please ask bye